Hi, welcome along to Transfer Daily. Uh, good to be back here today. Look, I've even got my uh, uh, lower third logo. I've got comments back up. Uh, Google has sorted me out today, so we're back in full bang. And I wanted to ask the question today, um, who would you prefer? We need a centre-back, and there's two centre-backs we've been heavily, heavily linked with at the moment. And it's Costas Monolos, who a lot of people think we're on the verge of signing. There's been a media outlets reporting that we've done medicals with him, etc. And the other target is uh, Mejita Nastacic, who plays for Manchester City, who um, it's been revealed now has been told that he can leave the club. And I want to take a look at both players and also find out who you guys would prefer. Now, if we look at Monolos, we've spoken about him uh, quite a bit over the past week. Uh, 23 years of age, a very, very talented player. Um, in the World Cup, that's all I can go off of really because that's the most I saw, saw of him. Um, and he was a very, very good player. I know you can't just go off of the World Cup, but he looked very good to me in the World Cup. Quite imposing, very strong, very direct, good with a ball at his feet. Looked the sort of player that would fit into Arsenal perfectly. And uh, still young, as I said, 23 years of age. And the signing just seems to make sense. Um, I mean, a lot of people have said it would cost about um, £8 million. What I'm hearing is that it would probably only be about £6 million. Um, his wages at the moment at Olympiacos, apparently he's on about £7,000 a week. So, listen, um, he's going to get way more than that coming to Arsenal. So, everything about coming to Arsenal for a player like Manolos looks like you know, he, 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 you know, you couldn't get no better. It's rosy. Then you look at Nastasic, um, again, a young player. He's only 21. Um, has played for Manchester City. Uh, you know, he hasn't been able to get into the team on a regular basis, but um, he's very um, well thought of. Serbian international. I mean, listen, Manchester City wouldn't have went out and bought him in the first place if he wasn't a top player. Um, would cost a lot more money, would probably be about £12 million. Um, and then, of course, you've got to wonder to yourself, would Manchester City want to sell to Arsenal because they might think, well, we're kind of strengthening him? Or would Man City just want to recoup the money and think to themselves, this guy's not going to come back and hurt us? His wages, of course, will be uh, more. Um, he's, he's definitely on a... I'm not sure of the exact amount he's on, but he's definitely on a lot more at Manchester City. So overall, it would be a much more difficult transfer to pull off. But who is the better player? Which player will more suit Arsenal's style? Because, again, Nastasic, he's a, a ball-playing um, centre-back. And, a, you know, from what I've seen of him, I think he's a pretty decent player. And as a backup centre-back, he would be a very good addition to Arsenal as well. So the two of them there, Manolos or Nastasic, which one of them... Um, would you go for? That's the question. I mean, I, I see one coming coming in already from John Melville, who says Manolos is a, is good for the future, um, but it could turn. He would rather that we nick a player from Man City, so that's he he, he would go for Nastasic. And Alex George has just uh, commented to say he would take both of them. Listen, it very well could be that we could need two two centre backs, although. We've got to remember the brilliant job that Callum Chambers has come in and done, and he's shown already that he can definitely stand in and do that job. Um, moving on to another um, Manchester City player that could be considered as well. Now, that is Micah Richards. Now, a couple of years ago, we were heavily linked with him, and there was a lot of gooners out there saying that we should go and try and get this guy. He can play at right back. He can play as a centre back. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, he was considered as one of the brightest England prospects. and he stayed at Manchester City, which is a bit of a graveyard for English players and English prospects, and his career's sort of gone backwards. He's had a lot of injuries, but again, he's available. Um, would it be a player worth going out there and trying to sign? I don't know. Not too sure about him, but he is available. Uh, turning to the uh, rumours that we were talking about yesterday, Eduardo Vargas. Um, there was loads of rumours flying around yesterday that he's going to be signing for Arsenal on loan. Um, remember, I was saying that um, I can't see why Arsenal would want to sign him, um, especially with Arsene Wenger saying that you know we've already got a lot of players who can play in that position. Well, it's sort of uh, starting to look like that rumour of him coming to London to play for Arsenal is not specifically correct. Yes, apparently he is supposed to be coming to London, but it's to go to Queen's Park Rangers. 
on loan and not also on loan. And that's why I found it a bit strange. I mean, he said, listen, it's not a done deal yet. It's not definite. But from what I'm hearing, he's supposed to be going to Queen's Park Rangers. And uh, the guys over in Chile who've been spreading the rumour have got <laughs> must maybe they think that, as well, everybody outside the country thinks there's only one team in London and that's Arsenal. <laughs> So if you come into London, they immediately presume it's Arsenal. But as a matter of fact, it looks like he's more likely to go to Queen's Park Rangers. And then again, this Cavani rumour. The Cavani rumour won't go away. It just won't go away again today, despite Arsene Wenger saying that we've got loads of players in those attacking positions. Again today, we're being linked with Edison Cavani. And I've got to say, I heard the most ridiculous transfer rumour of the summer. This one that I heard goes down as the most ridiculous and I've uh, I've re done a lot of research for these programs and I've read a lot of ridiculous rumors but this one I think is I've got to I've got to tell you about this one I think this is the worst one of all um it come out of Spain um and it's about Edison Cavani now according to this media outlet in Spain Arsenal are looking to sign Edison Cavani right to stop Manchester United from getting Di Maria now come on, <laughs> they obviously don't know about Arsenal, right? And they know there's no way that Arsenal are going to spend fifty million pounds to stop Manchester United from getting a player. It's absolutely ridiculous. The, the worst story of the summer. Um, if Arsenal are going to go and get Cavani, they're just going to go and get Cavani. It's as simple as that. Um, but to say that they're doing it to stop. Uh, Man United from getting Di Maria because if they get Cavani then PSG will be able to go out there and get Di Maria. It's the most ridiculous story I've heard of the whole summer. I mean, you know what? I wish it was true, but it's ridiculous. That is just not what how Arsenal operates. So, uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy story that. A um, couple more of your comments. Let's have a look what you guys are saying. Pago says we should get Manolos or Winston Reid from West Ham. And again, I like Winston Reid. And West Ham solid player, but this Manolos guy looks good. Um, Pramila Lama says uh, Manolos would be a better signing than Nastasic. Um, Luke Edwards says uh, he prefers um, Nastasic. He says he's younger and he doesn't get a game at Manchester City. He would prefer him. Uh, Michael, Michael Cypher says Nastasic is better. Manolos is too slow. Um, Taff says, I saw Nastasic against us and he was awful. Right? He, he, yeah, he, to be honest, he weren't that great in the um the charity shield the other day. Um EDT E sorry, EMD tutorial says Nastasic because he is a he has Premier League experience, yes. Um J, J Villa says, why not both with Cavallio? And um, that will shore up our defense. Um Jesus um, Alcazar says uh, he would prefer Manolos. Pago says uh, not Nastasic. He played um, against us in the Community Shield for City and he was terrible and he would be too costly. And uh, let's see, see for a couple more. Most people here seem to be going with Manolos. I don't know if that's because um, he's, he, you know, he could be on the verge of signing for us, but most of you guys there seem to be going for that. But um, listen, even one of those, I think, would be a very, very good player for Arsenal. Even one of those players could definitely do an excellent job for Arsenal. It's probably looking like it's going to be Manolos. But keep the debate going in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Just to um, talk about the game tonight, don't forget Arsenal taking on Besiktas. This is a massive game, really, really big. It comes early in the season. Um, but it's a massive game. Now, we're playing Besiktas, and we don't want to be complacent because we know how difficult it is to go over there to um, Turkey. Um, it's always a difficult place to go. Although we went there last year against Fenerbahce, and we've done the business, beat Fenerbahce very, very easily over the two legs. And Fenerbahce, remember, were the team that won the Turkish League last year. They finished way above um, Besiktas. As a matter of fact, Besiktas are only in the Champions League because Fenerbahce got chucked out of the Champions League. So Besiktas are nowhere near as good as Fenerbahce. We know they've got Demba Bar, who's a very good player. Another advantage for Arsenal is that Besiktas haven't even actually started their season yet. It doesn't start until the end of August. They've been playing a load of friendlies. And they recently even got beaten in a friendly against Wigan. However, 
Let's not get complacent. They did beat Feyenoord in the last round to get through to this stage. So to do that and beat Feyenoord, we know that they're definitely not no mugs. But if Arsenal have got their A game on, they should be able to win. I think if we can go there tonight, keep a clean sheet at all costs, get a couple of away goals, and listen, then we bring them back to the Emirates. We know that a lot of the Turkish teams don't really travel well. Then we should be all right. But let's do a professional job. Let's, you know, be really serious about this game because it is a massive game. And it could determine which signings come in. You know, you, between now and the end of the transfer window, if there are certain targets out there that know for 100% sure that Arsenal are going to be in the Champions League, um, for this upcoming season, then they'll be more willing to sign. So that's a massive, massive game tonight. So Arsenal have got to go out there and do the business. Uh, thanks for watching Transfer um, Daily today. Listen, there's loads more comments um, coming through, and I'm glad I've got the live comments back. Um, but um, keep those comments coming through. And, I, and just again, I love the little debates you guys have in the comments with each other about transfer targets. Absolutely brilliant. I love reading through it every day. And thanks for watching Transfer Daily. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, look out for an excellent video coming up today where we interviewed um, the author of a new book about Arsene Wenger and his 50 most uh, defining games. Brilliant, that is. Make sure you check that out. And uh, also we've got uh, the preview for tonight's game um, by Cookie of that clash against Besiktas tonight. We will be back tomorrow hopefully talking about a major Arsenal win.